the virus is showing us the difference between the people who have and the people who don't have. The WHO keeps saying, you know, wash your hands for 20 seconds. People don't have sink. They don't have water to wash their hands. WHO is saying, let's use hand sanitizers. People don't have even soap. No one, they can't buy and they can't afford. People I live with in this building, they get access to water once a week, once a week. How, how do you wash your hands every day? They ask me to speak with the landlord to ask if we can get access to water maybe for three days instead of one, maybe three days a week at least so that people now can, can use more water to wash their hands and, and to, to have hygiene for a whole floor. You have almost 100 people using this one toilet room. How do you stay clean? People who have fled their countries, do you feel more fearful? Not only of the virus, but also of the system. If you ask yourself, if I get sick, where do I go? Because the hospitals, the police station, who do you report anything to? Because there's that fear, what will happen to me? Will I be deported? You know, will I be put in prison? I really want to call out to people and what it means to lack a health infrastructure. One ventilator in Sierra Leone, six, I believe, in Burkina Faso, 13 in the huge Democratic Republic of Congo. And there's a very clear lesson in this, that universal health coverage is a million miles away for the people that we're talking about. But also that this disease can't be allowed to run riot until it overwhelms an already weak health system. Because if we don't get the prevention right, there isn't the health system to take care of people and there is going to be death on an absolutely appalling scale. What people should never succumb to is the idea that this disease is so big that it can't be, uh, it can't be hindered in its uh, path. If you and the corporations and foundations and governments of the world arm the NGOs with the resources to establish the hand washing stations, to establish the triage centers, to create the isolation units, even in areas where there is no proper infrastructure, even if you can isolate people there, we can get a job done to save people's lives. As a global human community, we're only as strong as the weakest link in the chain. And the weakest links in this chain are in the conflict zones, they are in the poor states of the world. The survival now is a team sport and life is a team sport. And it's time that the governments of the world showed that they understood that.